welcome to the digital couch a podcast about the ever changing world of digital the digital couch is brought to you by value first the podcast features leading global thinkers and their stories from the world of business management and marketing now here's your host shauri gupta Hello everyone. Today is the last episode of the season 1 of the Digital Couch. I've been fortunate enough to speak with some incredible people over the last 10 weeks. Today for our season finale, I couldn't have asked for a better guest. I have with me Mr. Vishwadeep Bajaj, Vish is CEO and co-founder at Value First and also happens to be my boss. Welcome Vish. Thank you Shori. It's a pleasure to be here with you and I'm so happy to note that uh, our season 1 is coming to an end and uh, i enjoyed all the podcasts earlier and uh, now happy to be part of one thank you for the invite nice my pleasure all right then so let's get into it i've actually structured the podcast in a very unstructured way i mean there'll be questions from your journey things that you want to tell the others so without a further ado let's get into it so Back in 2003 you were in UK and you were running a great company of yourself and then you decided to come back and start something what happened there was did you have a swades moment like Shahrukh Khan did or, i mean how did the entire idea of value first come by well i did watch swades <laughs> indeed and it was an inspiring movie however it wasn't exactly a swades movement it was more like a business compulsion when your back is against the wall mm-hmm. so my uk business after 911 wasn't doing very well in fact i was pretty much on beans and toast mm-hmm. so <laughs> i had to think of uh, how to pivot how to like do things differently to sustain the organization yeah. and uh, then this thought or idea came why don't i try to go back to india and explore the large market there is so it was the size of the market and opportunity which brought me back to india mm-hmm. and of course uh, when we started value first our company wasn't exactly doing what we do now uh, the predecessor or my company in the uk was in enterprise mobility where we would build bespoke mobile applications and it isn't the typical mobile applications which we know today right. those days uh, uh mobility was being adopted by select companies and each installation or each uh, implementation we would be engaged in would be like a quarter of a million dollars to half a million dollar mm. and uh, post 911 of course the it budgets in the uk had seen a drastic cut so uh, clearly th- that business model would not have worked in india so we were thinking how do we really take it forward and then notice that india had seen over the last years significant adoption on the mobile side and we just had this idea of why not uh, move the enterprise content over this 160 character payload of sms and uh, it wouldn't really be uh, capex heavy unlike our previous model of business where we would give Uh, gprs devices to or smartphones as we would call them now yeah. uh, to our uh, employees of enterprise customers and so on and so forth here the thought process was we simply use the existing infra and uh, offer a solution using sms as the transport bearer so that's how we started and uh, it was just i would say to conclude uh, a significant uh, you know uh, compulsion it was the survival movement not the swadesh <laughs> movement all right that's that's an honest one so in fact you touched upon how value first was a different business model compared to what you were doing back in the uk and you gave me a beautiful description once about value first how it is like a postman i wouldn't get into the story i'll let you do that would you want to use that and tell our listeners what exactly is value first in your own way well we are actually in uh, one word one phrase an enterprise communications company which essentially means we help our customers which are enterprises to connect with their consumers and uh, we do that by taking the content or the message of the enterprise to the consumer 
and uh, of course when we started it was over uh, sms and now we have multiple ways of doing so for example we have expanded into other channels such as uh, voice email push notifications browser notification and uh, you know whatsapp also chatbots so the ch channels have been getting you know expanded but the essence of the business is still the same which is to take the content from the enterprise to the consumer so we act like a postman in some sense that our job is to safely carry the packet of information or whatever the enterprise wants to tell its consumer yeah. in a safe secure and reliable way and of course the most important thing in a timely fashion so exactly like a postman is supposed to deliver content in safe secure manner uh, we created the solutions which would uh, allow us to do the same right. of course it, the analogy is very simple because there is whole lot of infra involved in doing what we do for example we have massive data centers where there is disaster recovery business continuity plans and so on and so forth so there is like absolute value addition mm -hmm. in terms of how the simple task of postman has to be executed so there is significant right. value but i think uh, the example is uh, or analogy is good because it conveys in one line one word this is what we do correct with you on that so speaking about value first right it's i think this october is going to be 17 years the company would have been doing some incredible things and over the years you've actually had a journey of yourself you've acquired companies you've scaled up across countries apart from india but for me one of the biggest reading as an outsider or now as an insider has been how smoothly you pivoted whenever there was a need so how important has this concept been for you and if you could also wrap this for a way that young entrepreneurs could benefit from i think it is one very common trait across uh, entrepreneurs because if this trait is missing then one wouldn't be an entrepreneur which is about being persistent being out there even despite whatever failures or roadblocks you may get so as a company of course when we started we had uh, a business model around sms and it was going well the only tough thing there was to evangelize the medium to educate the customers that this is a credible medium for business communication so we overcame that challenge uh, however it started becoming competitive so we had to think through of adding newer products so the first pivot was a very simple one which was to add new products so we added a voice uh, line of product where we could do both inbound and outbound uh, conversations on uh, the voice channel and uh, that worked okay and uh, then there was a regulatory influence in our business model because of which uh, the input costs went up and we really had a tough time we even had to downsize the company which was one mm. of the toughest thing which i had to do but thankfully as a business we we had uh, raised uh, two rounds so we were able to overcome that but also at that time we decided to move into becoming a b2c company so we did that pivot for a while and it continued uh, uh, doing well but uh, again uh, when the pricing or input cost change of sms we had to scale back and uh, we had to shut down our aspiration of becoming a b2c player mm. so all this of course is simply put simply like you go out there and try things right. it is no more than that and uh, when you are trying things uh, the outcome of course uh, is unknown the only thing which is in your control is that uh, are you putting your best foot forward or not so i think that's the most important bit and then we tried to venture into certain geographies some geographies work for us some we had to shut down uh, some we had to uh, we could scale so it's about really going out there and trying so pivot word is very exciting but in the end it is uh, more like an experiment mm -hmm. and uh, you have to put right focus and energy behind each experiment and if it works then it becomes like a successful pivot and uh, i think as an uh, any entrepreneur or as as any leader of an organization in the end what is important is you need to keep experimenting because a status quo is definitely not what will allow you to build a sustainable organization
so you touch a very interesting point there about how everyone should be experimenting but does this hold true even when you're 17 years into a well settled business like would you still be open to experimenting big things and if yes how do you decide that is it just your gut or business sense research what see uh, you always have to keep your uh, eyes and ears open you have to look for macro trends you need to figure out uh, how things are changing in the ecosystem in which you operate mm-hmm. for example uh, we could see that the ott channels were becoming like very significant at least uh, in the lives of consumers mm. so you know everyone is spending their time on whatsapp on in other countries on viber line and so on right. so uh, clearly consumer is spending now time differently earlier the consumers were available on their mobile simply using sms sure. you could reach them or they were available on social media like you have seen the likes of orkut etc yeah. which came and went then facebook became very popular even now it continues to be popular but still uh whatsapp is now really i would say where things are uh, in terms of consumer spending time uh, that is perhaps the biggest ott channel uh, and there are platforms like insta and so on and depending on which age bracket you are right. that's where you will spend time <clears throat> so when you keep watching these trends you know how you can uh, continue to align your business model uh, with uh, the macro trends for example as a business we figured out that it would be Uh, important for us to add products which allow our enterprises to uh, reach out to their consumers where they are and also in the manner where which is really uh, comfortable for the consumer right. as you see uh, cu- customers or consumers are uh, now very uh, i would say amenable or uh, friendly in their uh, a way of existence to the mode of com- conversation because right. you see all day long we are chatting correct and uh, so we saw this trend so we thought we need to build a chatbot product right so it's just just an example of, of how you keep uh, looking out and uh, uh, really you could possibly even take a step and do something completely different in our case Uh, we are still very focused around our core offering which is uh, enterprise communication yeah. so to that extent you know, while we are doing newer things but our essence and our fundamental purpose of existence remains the same so i think this is very important if uh, uh, you're not going too far away from your core then the possibility of success is very high fair point with you on this this also a great point where we should talk about like a great team a hard working team always helps with pursuits like pivoting or even the projects that have been there for years what about the culture inside the company i've personally seen people spend time more than people usually do in in average at different companies a lot of rehires and just joy everywhere around has this been a conscious effort for you and hr as an department at value first and how important has culture as a whole been for you well i think it's uh, uh pretty much every leader or every organization uh, when you speak to senior people senior folks everybody will say culture plays a very significant role yeah. and i think it is true uh, however it it is also like it could be a concept which could get lip service exactly so uh, one needs to be really mindful how culture is being used as a lever in creating an organization which is uh good for the customers good for the people who operate in the organization and generally for how the organization is placed in the society mm. so we pretty much i think very early on the founding team uh, thankfully for me uh, we are very people focused in our uh, outlook right generally it is our second nature because uh, very friendly i think uh, my founding team all everybody there and including the early hires we were very much similar and that created a great foundation so it created a and i don't mean friendly meaning that uh, we are just friends it is simply the way we look at things how we look at people so people always uh, take precedence over events over uh projects so whilst every goal we pursue is very important as an organization but we still always 
put really people first because we get into their shoes yeah that has been the way of thinking so because you are aligned with your peers your subordinates everybody pretty much is always on one page so when that happens uh, i have used for example a word in our values also if you recall mm-hmm. you may have read uh, one of our values is love each other right. where uh, uh, the whole point is that if uh, everybody is operating with this value of love uh, which essentially means accepting the other as they are right. then uh, alchemy would happen mm. so we believe uh, magic can happen if uh, we put aside you know personal differences we always look at the bigger picture so generally speaking at value first uh, people being first mm. uh, truly Uh, that has uh, helped us build a great foundation and on top uh, our day to day if you see when we have to take a decision that is where real test is for example when you are faced with a say conflict yeah. or a decision or a dilemma and if you get guided by the core values which you have set up for the organization then you know that uh, you are living true to your values so we have four values and we have always uh, tried to ensure that the values are well embraced within the organization mm. by one and all and uh, all difficult decisions all key decisions are made in the context of values so i think culture for me is actually uh, translating the values which you have set aside yeah. into practical reality and thankfully uh, because uh, i've had the good fortune of good colleagues mm. uh, we have been able to uh, really use that on a day to day basis and that is why i feel uh, within value first that spirit of camaraderie of being like one large family with one common vision that persists joy and then of course uh, you you have recently yourself <laughs> been part of what we call as a declaration of joy that we are about uh, creating joy and about experiencing joy yeah. so every interaction at value first whether it is internal or external we believe it has to be in the context of joy so it is what we are so i yeah. think it's a very important point thank you for asking this question yes also taking a hint from culture managing people happens to be one skill or thing that you've been doing for a long time i mean you managed large teams from your early days and you know from what i understand or what i read around helping them grow or making them feel safe etc are some things that a leader must take on maybe it sounds very preachy but what i what i mean to ask is what has been your approach in in doing this just managing these large team members for you so i think the real answer is not managing them <laughs> it's uh, simply being very focused around the time of hiring Mm. so you hire the right people and once you have those people in the company yeah. then just give them total freedom mm. because if you have done the right hiring then of course there is no need for you apart from sharing the vision apart from sharing the organizational goals there is no need for micromanagement yeah. because micromanagement i think comes in the way in yeah. my personal philosophy has been pretty much uh, again management by exception you just participate when there is some exceptional event whether it is great or if something is going wrong then you come into the picture otherwise let everyone be right. and that let everyone be brings out the best i think mm. so i think uh, uh, my personal style always has been uh, finding the right people and then giving them the freedom of expression and this i think uh, if it becomes uh, like a universal thing in the organization that it is actually happening at all levels then you are getting output the best output at every level of the organization yeah got your point all right so now that we're on people and talking about you know giving them the freedom there's also a discovery of oneself and spirituality has been a big part of your life so i'd want to actually understand how has it helped you over the years has it given you things that you preach and practice in your daily life well spirituality i think uh, can also be misunderstood so first i need to clarify on that because yes. uh, 
uh, spirituality for me is actually about finding the what is the absolute truth. Yeah. So that's been a personal journey, personal quest. Mm. So in that uh, uh, like side of things, I have uh, read, of course, a lot of philosophy, a lot of spiritual content. Also, I have figured out quantum physics is also giving significant pointers in that direction. There is a lot of neuroscience. So I read uh, all of these things which have helped me shape a lot of uh, you know ideas of about existence it is uh, like really getting closer to the uh, understanding which is applicable for one and all yeah and i think that is why perhaps the use of word spirituality because it is about uh, finding your true nature finding who you are and once you start thinking about this which means also that you are uh, kind of uh, from the relative angle uh, be able to understand the material world better yeah. so whilst we are operating in the material world and of course our uh, business environment the day to day goals jobs tasks which we have to pursue if they are placed in the context of truth mm. then uh, you will operate in the material world in a very uh, pragmatic as well as i would say in a manner which is uh, makes the environment conducive for best outcomes Correct. because what is happening is that you're not getting driven by pure what i would call as selfish agendas because then you are always looking at the bigger picture right so i think uh, uh, when we use the word spirituality in the context of business it is being able to do your daily tasks which are really material tasks uh, in a setting which is uh, i would say driven by uh, i would say the word uh, thinking about it uh, something which is uh, almost selfless mm. and uh, selfless uh, you might feel how is it uh, even possible because when you are in business how can you use the word selfless of course and i need to just make a uh, like this provide a you no know, clarification okay. that selfless really means that uh, you are always taking a bigger picture mm. you are uh, you operate from your true self mm. which is outside of the boundaries of you know artificial conditioning which we go through over life as we grow so we create notions biases prejudices and you know all of those uh, things like almost cobwebs in our yeah, head yeah. and when you have a glimpse of what is the truth then the artificial conditioning which one goes through yeah. uh, it becomes very apparent to you and then uh, everything is crystal clear how to operate in a material decision got your point that makes a lot of sense thank you for that also before we end this episode i have the most typical question of 2020 for you so we've all been fighting a pandemic out there it's been about 5 months now that we've not met in office so how's the last few months been for you personally professionally as well yeah it's a question which i think often <laughs> uh, because uh, initially it was of course like a big change in the way uh, uh, normal life changed so you were indoors pretty much and there was little bit of uh, apprehension around uh, the pandemic itself yeah. uh, because there was a lot of uncertainty how does it spread is it uh, like through a simple contact or would it even uh, happen through surfaces so even the things which were coming into the house yeah. we were uh, sanitizing and we were like really paranoid mm. and of course while we are careful even i mean as on date as well yeah but generally that uh, fear has gone away yeah. and this fear has only gone away because there is a lot of now content which is available both from say uh, organizations pertaining to the medical fraternity so uh, a lot of content has come about which we have consumed so uh, there is better understanding and uh, uh, so whilst we are coping up with the pandemic itself in terms of trying to avoid mm. getting say uh, 
infected if yeah. it were be, be the right word <laughs> so that continues but at a personal level being stuck at home yeah. uh, was becoming a challenge and i could relate that uh, not only if i am experiencing it my colleagues would also be going through the same right. so we tried to increase some events online mm. contact online and so on so we would do uh, internal webinars sometimes as a full company on the call sometimes yeah. smaller groups mm. and sometimes uh, uh, even uh, our people function would organize things where i would not be present but the activity within the organization increased so that of course uh, was happening at the organization level but it was also impacting our business negatively mm. uh, whilst working from home we found it became like uh, something which we embraced very smoothly i would say because i never got a, a single customer escalation wow. even till date mm. five months into it yeah. uh, there has been no customer ex- escalation so that means as an organization we are doing reasonably okay in how we are managing our services our quality of service and so right. on and so forth so that part is uh, like a great uh, revelation mm. that actually organization can operate from home but that said uh, the need for physical contact the need for meetings i think that's a human need so that doesn't go away of course so that urge to meet physically uh, continues and of course uh, in these 5 months i have had the opportunity of meeting at least i would say almost i would say a dozen people dozen <laughs> colleagues yeah. on various occasions right. so and of course when the first meeting happened it was like man uh, <laughs> why can't it be like every day, <laughs> every day? but then gradually now we have uh, figured out that it is going to be select moments when something serious needs to happen where uh, physical meeting is necessary of course and uh, apart from that i think uh, our revenue got impacted because ultimately our business is linked with the health of the businesses of our, of our customers yeah so that i think um, uh, we are already seeing now improvement as the economy has opened up the business is coming back into its original uh, say both revenue levels and so mm-hmm. on and profitability levels it is becoming better so we feel that it will soon be behind us but there have been lot of learnings i think uh, those learnings particularly we need to carry forward yeah so i think uh, to summarize on this it's been uh, an interesting phase of not only for me i'm sure for everybody else yeah. but uh, one we could do or at least i could personally do a lot of introspection so mm-hmm. there is a learning about self also there was a introspection around the organization because things which we never could uh, allocate time to we did that so overall i think it's been a, a whilst not a great positive experience from uh, the pandemic itself yeah but still an opportunity for us to learn a lot so hopefully we can carry that forward and uh, for example this podcast itself uh, normally we would not have uh, done this yeah but now that uh, we i i think it's a great initiative because it gives us opportunity to connect with people right. to hear their views and uh, i'm looking forward to season 2 as well same here yeah. All right on that note thank you so much wish for being a part of this and being so honest and friendly with all your answers it's been a pleasure sitting with you and the nine other people as well before this episode and i look forward to seeing all of you in season 2 very soon good luck shori thanks for joining us this time on the digital couch Make sure to visit our website vfirst.com where you can subscribe to the show on the platform of your choice. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, do write to us at the digital couch at vfirst.com. Be sure to tune in to our next episode. See you.